fourth minus 19 u squared v squared minus 40 v to the fourth. Now, we, at first glance, you think, oh, GCF, but no, not really, okay? Because not every term has, uh, obviously with the numbers, there's no GCF, but when it comes to the variables, two of them have u's and two of them have v's, uh, but not all three of them have either one. So we can't do a GCF here. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, so we just need to jump straight into our two sets of parentheses. Now the only thing that's going to multiply, well, not the only thing, but um, what's going to multiply to give us 3 to u to the fourth here is 3 u squared times u squared. That's what's going to give us 3 u to the fourth. Okay. Um, now looking at the last term. Okay, to get v to the fourth, we know that it's going to have to be v squared in there, but we got to figure out what numbers, uh, what coefficients to put on those. Uh, so factors of 40, what, what's kind of common and pops into your mind for factors of 40? Looking at that middle number, since it's 19, I'm thinking probably let, let's go for the, the smaller ones. Let's go for 8 and 5. Let's, let's see if that works for us first. Um, and I'm actually going to put the 5 first and the 8 second because when I do that, the outside here is going to give me 24 u squared v squared. The inside is going to give me 5 u squared v squared. Yes, I know that the v squared technically comes first, but do alphabetical order. <clears throat> that 40 was negative, so one of them's positive, one of them's negative. Can we add slash subtract 24 and 5 to get negative 19? Yeah. If we've got negative 24 plus 5, we're going to get negative 19 there in the middle. So that's how that one factors. Uh, let's look at number eight. Number eight. I think there may be a GCF here on number eight. I know 12 and 360 are divisible by six. Let's see, 68 is not. Okay, well, what about four? Divisible by four. It is. Okay, so that helps us a little bit, makes our numbers a little bit smaller. Let's divide by four and oh, what else do we have? I missed something else. What else do all three of those terms have? They all have a B. So when we take out a 4B, we're left with 3A to the fourth plus, what did I get there, 17? Yeah. 17B squared, A squared, and I think the reason why they had the B first was because it had the higher exponent. So we'll fix that here in a minute, and that would be 90, b to the fourth. Okay, slightly bigger numbers this time, but we can handle that. Um, we're going to go with 3a squared again, and 3a, not 3a and 3a, 3a squared and a squared. I apologize. My brain's getting ahead of my hands. Okay, we've got to have b squared times b squared to give us b to the fourth. Let's think about factors of 90. Hmm. Well, 9 and 10 are what pop out to me first. I wonder if that would work. Uh, I think it will. I think it will because 9 times 3 is 27, and 90 is negative, so that means one of them's positive and one of them's negative. If I do it like this, we get positive 27 on the outside, negative 10 on the inside. That's going to combine to give us positive 17. And you should always check, I haven't really mentioned this up to this point, but you should always look at your factors right here uh, in parentheses and make sure that they don't have anything in common. Because if they do, that means you missed something with your greatest common factor. You didn't get the greatest common factor. So if instead of that being 3 and 10, that had been 2 and 10, that would mean that we should have taken out uh, 8 as our GCF instead of 4. Okay? So always check that when you do your factors. Okay, let's look at number 9. 20x to the 4th minus 3x squared y squared minus 9y to the 4th. Okay, well, 23 and 9 don't have anything in common. Um, 
I'm probably going to try five and four first. It may not work. We have several options when it comes to 20, but I'm going to try five and four first. And I'm going to go ahead and put my y squared there on the end to give me y to the fourth. Nine, we don't have too many choices. I'm going to try three and three to begin with, and it is negative, so I've got some opposite signs. Uh, so we get 15 on the outside, and we get 12 on the inside. Let's see here, if the 15 is negative, then we are going to get negative three when we put those together. So that would be how that one follows. Number 10. A, 15, 34, and 16 don't have anything in common. So we might have to do some erasing here, but that's okay. Um, I'm going to try 5 and 3 when it comes to 15. It's probably not going to be 5 and 1, but as soon as I say that, it's going to be. Okay, 5 times 3 gives us 15. And 16 is positive, so that means both of these are going to be negative. I'm going to try 4 and 4, see if that works. Uh, the outside here gives us negative 20. The inside gives us negative 12. That is not negative 34. Okay, so we're going to have to change something. Um, let's see here. If I change that to 8 and 2, not going to work, so maybe I need to change, hmm, let's change our 5 and 3, let's see if it is 15 and 1. Let's see here, 16, we got 4 and 4, and 8 and 2, and 16 and 1. 16 and 1 is not going to work for 15, because those add to give 34. Mm. Was I wrong? Did, would 8 and 2 work? I don't know. Let's check it one more time. We leave it as 5 and 3. 8 times 5 is going to give us 40. That's not going to work. So if we put the 8 here and the 2 here. Oh, yeah, it does work. 24 and 10, 34. Okay, my bad. So it's 5 and 3 and 8 and 2. <coughs> Sometimes you just got to play around with it for a little bit. Okay? All right, last two examples. Six x to the fourth minus sixty x squared plus fifty four. Okay, uh, there is a GCF. It's fifty four divisible by three. I believe it is. Let's take out a three. Two x to the fourth minus. Oh, you know what? I bet it. Nope, it's divisible by six. X to the fourth minus ten x squared plus nine. And that would factor into x squared minus 9 times x squared minus 1. 9 times 1 is 9. 9 plus 1 is 10. Okay. Here's an example. You may wonder, well, why did we go back to one single variable? Because this is an example of where we need to factor a little bit more. Okay. Both of our factors there end up being the difference of perfect squares. So we need to factor each of those further. x squared minus 9 is x squared plus 3 times x minus 3, and x squared minus 1 is x plus 1 times x minus 1. Okay, let's look at number 12. No GCF there. Factors of 45 that add to give us 14, that would be 9 and 5. 
So only one of these factors further, a squared minus 9 is a plus 3 times a minus 3. a squared minus 5, it would be great if that were the difference of perfect squares, but 5 is not a perfect square. So that's as far as that one will go. Okay? So what I would 